thank you all for coming today. We're going to hear a little bit of the research that Guitry um, did while he was in our group. He was born in Libreville, which is actually in Gabon, which means freedom in French. Um, a few years ago, he moved to the U.S., actually on his birthday in 2006, and uh, went to Grayson College in Denison, Texas from 2007 to 2009, where he got his associate degree in biology, which was officially awarded in 2011. He was then a student at Southeastern Oklahoma State University in Durant, Oklahoma, and he graduated in 2012, actually not too long ago, with a bachelor's degree in biotechnology. And that's where he met Dr. Nancy Paiva, who's a former Nobel scientist, uh, as his advisor. He has expressed an interest in grad school, which we're very happy to hear and uh, pursue studies in plant biology or microbiology. So you know, Guitry joined my research group in May of this year and has spent uh, the past few months working um, on the project related to research experience for undergraduates funded by the NSF EBSCOR program. So with that, Guitry. Thank you, Dr. Monteos, for this introduction. Today, I'll be talking about my research experience for undergraduate. And I'll, I'll focus my speech on the biomass yield and the lignin content in alfalfa. My, my presentation will have two, two main points. In the first point, I will be talking about the research project. We count objectives, greenhouse, greenhouse work, or field, field work, and laboratory work. Then on the second point, I will be presenting my other experiences at the Noble Foundation that count for workshops and seminars that I've ten, attend to. A little background about alfalfa. Why are we talking about alfalfa? Why are we concerned about alfalfa with alfalfa? Alfalfa is one of the most important crops in the legume, forage legume crops in the world, in the entire world. And actually is the fourth major crops in the United States. And alfalfa shows some high biomass potential. Alfalfa has a, a low pro production cost because of its ability to, f to fix its own nit nitrogen instead of other forage crops. And something that's more special about alfalfa is the fact that alfalfa can be used at the same time as a forage crops and as, as a, a biofuel crops. We can use, like the shown the picture, we can use the leaves to feed the, the kettles, and you can use the stem to convert bio, biomass, alfalfa biomass to biofuel. Why, why are we looking for alternative, after alternative source of fuel? I mean, when we look at the world today, we see the, our reserves are decreasing, and the prices are going up. Because, and there is also some climate change. So we need some new source of energy to kind of balance the whole thing. A, li a little background about the lignin. Why are we talking about lignin? Lignin is one of the alfalfa component, one of the uh, plant cell component. And lignin is responsible of the, the mechanical structure in the plant. Lignin also gives uh, the framework to the plant to transform water and nutrient. So we need to, to see the impact of lignin in, into the, in the plant. And we've seen that when the lignin goes up, the more lignin we have, the quality of the forage de decreases. The animal digestibility also decreases. And the, the conversion of the biomass, the biomass into biofuel, biofuel also dis, dis, decreases. So we, we want to decrease li, lignin, con, the lignin content in the plant. How can we do that? We can, we can do that, but there is two ways we can do, we can do it. We can first 
don't regulate the enzyme involved in the lignin biosynthesis. We can we see on the picture there is three there's three lignin types. And when you look at the part the pathway, we see all the lignin types are they are related to one pathway. There is like branches on the trees and but so don't don't re re regulate it, which means suppress one of the enzymes re responsible for the one of the lignin, lignin, we can stop its production. That's the first way. The second way, we can breed to reduce lignin content. So by doing breeding, we can try to have a, a pure line, which is just a, speci a specific variety that, that's more lignin reduced variety, more pure. Our research objective has three three points. The first, the first point was to improve, increase the biomass yield. We want to identify the genetic variation of lignin, and we want to develop some alfalfa with less lignin. Here's our research overview strategy. Strategy. We want to start. We want. We will go step by step on each point, but we start by taking a look to the phenotype, what we see. Our phenotype data is come for the greenhouse. So we take an evaluation of, we, we take a look at the greenhouse and see how we have our results from the greenhouse. The greenhouse give us an evaluation of our population. On the picture, on the right, on the right picture, we have our population in the greenhouse. And the greenhouse, something special about the greenhouse, it gives us a content and control environment so we kind of decide of the 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 thread that we want to submit our population to like the draft the the draft like the insect uh, i mean our on the on the right the picture is just one of the thing we do in the greenhouse years on our uh, greenhouse harvesting Our, after evaluate our population in the greenhouse, we want to submit our population to the real, the real test, the test in the field. So on the left side, we have a picture of the research park plot, which is one of the field used at the Noble Foundation. And on the left, we have one of the sh ship map, the ma ma mat map that we use for our test. This, on this map, you see different colors, and these colors are reps. Each color represents each reps. And we also use these, these reps to reduce the environment effect, the environmental effect on the, the population. So no, our results will not be just su subject to one, one reps, which are, they are more accurate. Here's a picture of the Red River field. And on top of the picture, you can see the, our population, which is the cross between the Altered 4 and the NECS, NECS 141. They are the, both, both uh, alpha, alpha, alpha represent our, the point for our, for our cross, our population. And on, the, on this picture, you can see there is a kind of plot. There are, there are plots. A plot is actually one. Is actually four plants together. And here are a, a, a single, two single picture of one plot. Two, two single picture. Each picture represents one plot. And we can see how this this one comes from the, the research park. And we can see how the environment affects our crops and our population. After gathering data from the greenhouse and from the field, we need to process them. So here's how we process our data. First, we, we need to do an, an harvesting either from the, the for, either from the field or from the greenhouse. After the harvesting, we need to dry our sample. During our sample, we do it here at the Pepsi building into one of the oven. 
after grinding, we need to do the, after drying our sample, we need to do the grinding. And the grinding is the simple, will take about a week, depending on the sample size, how many size, how many sample do, do we have. After process our, our samples, after the grinding, we need to analyze our samples. And to analyze our samples, we're using the NIRS, which is NIRS. And here on the, on the, left, on the left picture, we have the re result of uh, lignin analysis for six parental, parental alpha genotype for alpha, alpha, alpha. And on the picture, we can clearly see that ALTED4 and NECS141 shows the less lignin compared to the other, other parental genotypes. And on the right side, it's just showing, on the, the right side is just showing uh, the NIRI system. After talking about the phenotype, we'll talk, in a, we'll talk about the genotypes, the, geno the genotype. Here, here's our genotyping approach. How are we going, are we going to, to conduct our genotypic research? Uh, first, we, we need to gather like sequence, and then we need to blast our sequence to identify the target genes they are, they are related to lignin, and then design some primers to test these to test these SMPs. So we start by searching our we start by searching our sequences, the gene they are related to. The gene they are related, related, related to lignin. So here an example of how we, after searching and saving uh, the CCCOM, the CCCOM is one of the genes that you see on the, the, the lignin biosynthesis pa pathway. So here we have, we have searched it and we have saved it. It's, it's already in, in our, our computer. We want to retrieve it its sequences, so we just need to enter it through, through BLAST, we need, just need to BLAST it, and it pops up. Here, it pops up in the document, in the user document, in the bioinformatic, bioinformatics files. The thing, the SNPs. Here, we need, we need to find the gene, we need to find the, the gene the, the sequence they are related to our candidate genes, so we're looking for candidate gene, and here we have a, cons a, cons a consensus sequences, and we have our two parents that we compare to the the consensus sequences to find the SNPs where that variation the, 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 that variation occur, and on the pictures we can see where. They are different. The, where they are different from the consensus gene are where the SNP occurs. After finding our SNPs, we need to, we need to design primers. They they're going to target them. And here's the primer 10222, designed by light scanner primer design. And this primer can target up to eight. SNPs, and in the, in the red box is is the SNPs the SNPs one that is like a light, and you can see it's 64 long. The, the strategy to to test the CN, the SNPs, we already design our primer, we all we already identify our SNPs, we already design primer the primers they're going to target them. Now we need to, to test them. And to test them, we run PCR tests. We run some PCRs to amplify DNA, DNA sequences. And depending on, on, the, on the side of our population, in, in our case, our population is pretty, is pretty big. So we're going to use a 384 wild plate to run the, the PCR on. The high resolution melting, 
This is the platform that we use to, to test our, our, our to analyze our primers, our PCR's result. And this, this system work based on the denaturating temperature on the S and P's alleles. How does it work? Uh, here we have two. Here we have two samples: samples one and sample two. On this, the sample one has a TA bond, and the sample two has a CG bond. We know that base bond, nucleotide base bonds are different in nature. Of the TA bond is weaker than the CG bond because of the bond. The, the nature of bound, this, this, the TG only have two, two bounds when the CG has three bounds. So it will take less temperature to denature the, C, the, TG, the TA bound than the temperature to, den to denature the CG bound. And the, the result, the, these, these bonds, what the R, RM, does it use a, flu a fluorescence to mark the denaturation of these two bonds? And so what we what we having is two two pigs. Here I'm just showing the pigs. They mark the denaturation of each bond. So for two different samples, two different bonds, we end up with two different pigs. We're still working on our phenotype, on our research strategy overview. And here, we are the step three, the data analysis, how we analyze our data. Our data. After the PCR analysis, using the light scanner software, we, we have polymorphic result, polymorphic result. We chose the net. We found we, f we found polymorphic marker between the alpha alpha and associated with lignin content. Here, here on the graph, here we have two graphs. They're actually the same. One, one is just uh, the normalized melting curve, and when the other one is the normalized melting peaks. On the normalized melting peak. We, we have two curves, one which is clear and one which is red. The red one on top represents the homozygous parent, and the, the one on the bottom represents the heterozygous parent. So we see the polymorphism, two different. After analyzing our, our, res, our result, we, we can we have identified the gene related to lignin. We have tested these genes, and we can com come back to an, ex an already existing link linkage map and complete it. Because we have, we have identified these genes on certain li linkage group of the linkage map. On the board, it's just five four of the linkage group that we have completed by analyzing the segregation ratio, we can complete them. On the, in the green box are the, the genes that we have added up to the map. We can see we, are, we, are have that we, are, we add one on the linkage group one, two on the linkage group three, and one on the linkage group eight. We add the one there in the green box. So we've seen that we have identified genes that are related to lignin consent, content, and we have uh, we are on, on the on our overview of strategy back. We have identified our, our gene. We have put them on the map. We have completed the map. So somehow. somehow now, now, looking at the map, we can use uh, these genes to better select the 
better, better select the, the variety of alfalfa that we use for our next cultivar. cultivar. That's just what is showing up. So this is our research summary. It shows what, we, what we've, we've done. We've evaluated the population. We've evaluated their agronomic performances on the field. We developed the, the SNPs targeting the, the genes, the lignin genes in our fall form. And we plan to use this marker on the, we, we plan to use this marker to select better alfalfa with a better, better trait, better, better phenotype. This, like I said, the second part of my presentation would be the workshop part, where I show the, my workshops at the Nobel and my seminar as, at the Nobel. Here, a picture of the Nobel farm visit. You want to visit a couple Nobel farms in the area. Here's a picture of the DUP farm, farm. We want to visit the DUP farm and talk about the irrigation systems. Here we are learning about uh, the linear irrigation system and how it is different from the circular irrigation sy system, how is this system is more performant. Here we are the Oswald, Oswald Ranch. We, we learn about the, the, the cattle and the feeding and reproduction habit, uh, the, feed, the feeding and the, the breeding of the cattle used, by the, uh, used at the Oswald Ranch. Here's a visit at the, the Pepsi building. At the, the Pepsi, we learned about the Pepsi building, its, its history, and how it's used by the foundation to store seeds and to, to, gr to grind seeds. That's where the grinding tech part. Here, a visit at the Dr. Monster's lab. Here, we're talking about uh, genotyping and phenotyping method, how we, how we do it at, the, at the, the foundation. Here, we have a talk. We're learning, we're learning from Han, one of my mentors. And the last, the last part is the, sem the seminar. At the Nobel Foundation, I had the opportunity to take part of seminars, going to postdoc pre presentation on different subjects like agronomy, biofield, biochemistry, and plant breeding. Thanks. I want to deeply thanks the Dr. Monteros Lab that hosted me for this summer, especially my mentor, Chichin Gu, Dongman, Dongman Ku. Han. I want to, f I want to, to thank the EPSCORP funding for their funds. I want to thank the Nobel Foundation, and I want to thank my advisor, Dr. Nancy Pelvin from Southeastern University. Thank you.